Thank you, Lord. Let's get it. Let's do it.
tell me, go, go, tell me. Can we raise up our voices and sing it down? Go, tell me, go, go, tell me.
2023. And we're never going back. You have rescued me. You have rescued my life. He has rescued me.
Cause you Cause you today, oh God, to bow before you, God, to honor you, God, to adore you, God, to reverence you, God. We thank you, oh God, for your presence in this place on today, God. We thank you for your glory, oh God. We bow down and we worship the holy God, the only God, the only true and living God, the holy God of Israel. God, we worship 
worship you, God, and we give you glory. We declare your holiness in this place, oh God. Speak to us today, God. We have come to hear from Abba Father. We have come to hear from you, oh God. Oh God, touch every home represented, God. God, we declare by the authority of the Holy Ghost, God, that not one person will leave here just the same, oh God. Oh God, let your due rest upon us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God. We give you glory, Father, and we give you honor, oh God. In the mighty, in the master's name of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We reverence the Lord God today. Amen. If you would just greet your neighbor, but please keep a spirit of worship throughout this service. Amen. Open your eyes and your ears to expect. Pull on the anointing of this house. Step into the glory on today and receive all that the Lord has for you because surely the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. We give God glory. Amen. Today is Sunday, December the 24th, 2023. Amen. It is Christmas Eve. Amen. And we are delighted to welcome you to our Christmas service on today. Amen. We want to thank the worship team for ushering us into the presence of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. Amen. 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 I want to greet all of our Global Fellowship members, uh, uh, the family. Amen. Amen. It has been such a delight to do ministry uh, with you all year long and to serve alongside you. Amen. Amen. So we have uh, fastly approached the end of the year. It's a, very, it's a celebratory time for many people who celebrate Christmas on today and other um, holidays. So season's greetings. Amen. We would like to greet our online visitors. To those of you who are watching us around the world or via any social media platform, we want to welcome you to Global Fellowship Church. We are so delighted that you have joined us. We know there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Amen. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Amen. So as the word goes forth on today, receive all that the Lord has for you. Amen. Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors in the house on this morning? If we do, if you will raise your hands. Hey, thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Global Fellowship, let's give them a warm welcome. If you're sitting next to them, please greet them and make them feel welcome. Amen. Um, if you would keep your hand up as the ushers come around, they would like to give you a contact card. Or we also have a QR code displayed on the screen that you can scan with your phone. If you have a card, place it in the um, uh, basket during our tithe and offering time, and uh, um, we will want to keep in contact with you. Additionally, please stay. Don't rush out after service. Uh, a pastor on our staff would love to meet with you and get to know you. Amen. Our, our service times here at Global Fellowship Church is 10 a.m. every Sunday, 5 o'clock p.m. every Sunday, Wednesday recharge service, and then we also have Miracle Night every last Friday of the month. Amen. Um, sometimes that schedule changes, not very often, but as on today, we won't have 5 o'clock p.m. service. Amen. Somebody say, aw. That's okay. <laughs> Amen. We won't have a 5 o'clock p.m. service, but we would like for you to um, stay for our Christmas celebration. The hospitality team has prepared a special meal for us. Amen. So let's sit together. We're a covenant family. Let's, um, let's enjoy what they have prepared for us. It's always good. Amen. Please note again, there will be no 5 p.m. service. Um, if you are not aware, we have a prophetic encounter service every Thursday with Dr. Joseph Mwenya. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise goes right there. Amen. It's every Thursday. The information is on the screen there. It's live on uh, social media, on um, Facebook, as well as on YouTube. So if you're not following us, go ahead and do that. Please like and share the broadcast. Each broadcast is very informative. It's powerful. It's life-changing. It's enlightening. Amen. So you definitely want to tune in. He's taking prayer requests. People are coming back with testimonies. 
And so this is not your ordinary Thursday night live. This is uh, extremely unique. So please join us. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, December 31st, will be our New Year's Eve service. Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Our New Year's Eve service. On next Sunday, our service times will be 10 o'clock a.m. and also 9 o'clock p.m., okay? So make a note of that, 10 a.m. and 9 o'clock p.m. So be here for the crossover service. Please be sure to invite all of your family and friends. You want to get here early. Last year, the house was packed. You know, I'm so used to having my little seat. <laughs> I walked in, and it was packed, and it was just beautiful, glorious. So come expecting to hear what God has to say. Amen for the new year and what he's speaking uh, to us as a body of Christ corporately and also he'll speak to you individually. Amen. 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 So if you will go ahead and stand to your feet at this time, we would like to welcome the prophet, the pastor and the father of this house, our very own Dr. Joseph Munya. Amen. <laughs> Come on, if you don't mind, help me praise the Lord. Put your hands together and give the Lord a big shout of victory in the house. Is that okay? Hallelujah. So, Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to come and fellowship. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for the past 12 months. But above all, we believe that the next five, the next seven days, that what you began in Janu January this year, you are going to accomplish it by the 31st of December. It is not over yet. So we are declaring, let the word manifest. And let the spirit raise us to another level. In Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. Amen. Before you sit down, I want you to greet your neighbor and uh, welcome them into the special service. And please wear a smile. Put on a smile. Amen. Amen. And amen. And those of you that are watching us from around the world, we welcome you to our one and only service today, uh, New, uh, Christmas Eve. We are forever grateful for your partnership amen we are so grateful for your partnership i want to go ahead and uh, do the offerings get the offerings out of the way before we do the offering i want to share the the vision i've been praying just how much should i share should i share the whole thing or just part of it So do do not do not do not text anything yet. Do not give anything yet. I need you to hear the the, the vision first. So I was reading the book of Psalm. Let's pull it up. One hundred and twenty-six. Last night, Psalm one hundred and twenty-six from twenty-five and twenty-six. And let's do the NLT, please. Psalm 126 from verse 5, from 25 and 26, Psalm 126. But by the way, Elder Winnie, go ahead and stand if you don't mind. So, some of you do not know that we have an elder in this church. And. <laughs> All right. I, I haven't said clap yet, but thank you for clapping in advance. El Elder Winnie has been with us almost from the conception of this. I think she came in probably about a year after we started, and she has been with us now. We, we did not see her for a couple months because uh, she was working in the COVID epic center, and she felt she didn't want to come and give you all COVID. But we thank God nobody got COVID, and those who got COVID, we beat it. Elder Winnie has been such a pillar to, to this church. I, w I wanted to, because she's, she's back and in full swing, I wanted to um, just remind those of you that have never known her to be 
one of the elders, but she is one of our elders and a pillar in this church. And so can we honor her and celebrate Elder Winnie? If you don't mind, stand on your feet and just clap your hands. Yes, yes, yes. Let's honor her and appreciate the woman of God. Amen and amen and amen. She has been such a blessing. Amen, amen. She's, she's been there. Her and uh, Brother Jiva and his wife and, of course, you know, Sister Sarah, she's in the back somewhere there. They've been uh, some of the longest um, people. And then, and then we have Gertrude, who is, I think she's in the kitchen preparing your meal. So we, 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 we really thank God for that. But I was reading Psalm 126, 25, please, 25. Yes, 25 and 26. I'm, I'm sorry, 5 and 6. I'm sorry, it's my fault. 5 and 6, yes. That's what I wrote 5 and 25 in here, but it's 5 and 6. Thank you, Victor. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. These are specific people that are not planting because they have plenty, but these are people that are planting because sometimes that's a sacrificial seed that they are giving. Last night, God got, gave me one of the most unusual visions. Very unusual vi vision. I was, I wasn't Superman, but I was carrying what looked like a vehicle, like a bus. I was lifting the whole thing over my head, and, and I could barely hold it. Meanwhile, I was praying, God, I need help. And I was told, hang in there, help is on the way. And when I turned over, I saw a person coming with a machinery like a forklifter to come and not only to balance it, but to put it where it's supposed to be. And then the Lord spoke to me and said that the burden has been on your shoulder. Of course, we have, we have other leaders, we have pastors in the church. But I, I don't know if many of you understand the burden to carry the church. We have pastors like Dr. Lungi and, 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 uh, and, um, and Dr. Tando that, you know, I can't say migrated, but literally migrated, you know, South Africa, San Antonio, and then to Dallas to come and, and help, you know, build. We have, you know, pastors like Dr. Akum that are here building with, with the kids that all of us, now some of us may not know this, that we have to support, pay the bills. And so when the services are over, you guys go back and, you know, everything is good. The service was good. I go in my office and I'm saying, God, their bills have to be paid. You guys are way too quiet on me today. Their bills have to be paid. So I have been praying to the Lord. How long are we going to be here where we are barely balancing? So when God showed me that person coming with a forklift, which is a machinery that the Lord told me that a time is coming when we are not going to be barely balancing, but God is going to raise people. Now, some of you are already in this building, and some, some people are coming, but God says we are, we, are, we are leaving that place where we are barely balancing. And, and I'm telling you this right at the most critical time of this ministry, this church. We are barely balancing. But I have, I have been praying and I have been looking forward to a time when people are going to rise in this church that are saying, this is not only going to be your burden, it's going to be my burden, where they get underneath the church and carry the burden on their shoulders. As a pastor, one of the things that I have to deal with is people come into church and they, they, they look at you and they say, Pastor, 
We want you to release the anointing because I carry a mantle that has been proven over the years that transforms people's lives. That's the mantle that I carry. I, I put something on the Facebook, I think it was yesterday, that sometimes people mis misunderstand the material substance that I have to my anointing. But, but you must understand that that's, that's a mis misunderstanding. Because sometimes, me as a, as a priest, I may not have a mansion, but I can release a mansion in my spirit to you. Did, did, you, did you hear that? Because if you look at it in the Bible, most of the priests did not live in a mansion. But they were able to lay their hands on people and they went on to, to build that. So, I have seen people come to this church and I have seen people benefit from the prophetic word and they benefit from the anointing. And as soon as things begin to take off, they totally forget. In my, in my heart, I have been grieving God raised people in this church that are going to stand underneath the church, that are going to put the weight of the church on their shoulder, that are saying, God bless me to bless this place. How, how many of you this morning are saying 2024 is going to be my assignment to go underneath the church in prayer and financially that I'm going to support this church. I'm going to pray that as God increase me, as he gives me the ability that I am going to help this move to another level. So the Lord finally this morning, he showed me that help is here. Not help is coming, but help is here. I don't know who in this church has been raised by God, but I truly believe that there are some of you that are here some of you that are watching wherever you are, that God has put such grace on your life so that you can go underneath the church. And I speak this from my heart. You are the men and women I dearly pray for that a day is coming and the day has come when you will encounter favor in your businesses, favor in your career, the, the Lord says that when pestilences and viruses are released on earth, that because you support his vision, they will not come near your dwelling place. Oh, my God. My God. That as the dry seasons called recessions begin to be poured out on earth, your place of work, your home, your businesses, are going to be forever green. I had to share this vision with some of you. So some of you, this is just another, you know, another statement from the pastor. But I needed you to understand that there is a high expectation from the Lord on the responsibility that God has given you and I for this church. That our job is to ensure that the church does not tip over because we don't have enough. But our job is to make sure that we move the work of the Lord forward. If this was 2,000 years ago, we had no lights, we had no rent. <laughs> but this is 2024 almost. But very soon, many of you are going to walk up in here and you are going to be blessing this house exceedingly. So I am praying that God is going to expedite your breakthrough. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for, for you guys later on today. But as we give our offerings and our tithing this morning, I want us to know that we have a responsibility to hold the house down. We have the responsibility to give so that the work of the Lord advance and it moves forward. We have come a long way as a church. We have come a long way as a church. And there's no slowing down. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. All right. Now, if you receive that message, put your hands together and give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. So, he that goes, put that, put that scripture please on the, on the screen. He that goes carrying seed, he who plants in tears, we will harvest with what? Shouts of joy. 
I want to stand on this prophetic anointing and declare that your season to harvest with joy is here today. Can, can we give the Lord a thunderous amen this morning? Look at verse 6. They weep as they go to plant their seed. But they will sing as they return with what? Harvest. Raise your right hand and say, Lord, thank you for the mighty harvest. Those of you that are home, you can partake, partake as well. And receive the harvest of God in your life. That in this season, you are going to see with your eyes the reward of the righteousness in this generation. And the people say, amen, amen and amen. Ashes, let's get our envelopes. I need an envelope as well, please. Uh, our information to give if you've never been here before. We have very easy ways of giving. We have the text to give. That's 84321. And we have the website. You can give online. And that's the iamgft.org. And the cash app is uh, the dollar sign I A M G F T. That's on the cash app. And you can also zail, and that's the 214-774-9568. And that's the zail. 214-774-9568. I want to begin by blessing those of you that are tithing this morning. Understand that if you are not tithing, the 90%, if, they are, if you're not tithing, the 100% is not consecrated. There was an amen in the back. I'm pretty good over there. Amen. I, in this church, we are not going to be shy to talk about tithing because it's a biblical principle. Say amen to that. Tithing, even if someone was to come and give us a billion dollars, right after that offering of a billion dollars, I would still talk about tithing. We do not shut tithing down because the church has enough. It's a personal, individual covenant that we have with the Lord, that we tithe out of our income. And many of you are getting presents tonight. Santa is going to come tonight and you better tithe out of that Santa gift. If you still believe in if you still believe in Santa, come forward for deliverance. I'm one of those people that I think I go shopping when I have to, not because it's there. So during Christmas in my house, I get an envelope and I put money and I'm like, this is more than the $20 gift I could have bought you. But watch this, that out of your income, whatever income it is, if someone give you $50 for, for the gift card to go and eat at uh, in and out $5 out of that belongs to the Lord. Say amen to that. If somebody help you $700 to pay the car note, $70 belongs to the Lord. Now, it is in that kind of faithfulness that unlocks the gates of heaven because you are a covenant giver and not an opportunity giver. An opportunity giver are those who are saying, when I have more, I will give, and God says, no, I cannot trust you with the resources of the kingdom of God. Ask your neighbor, are you a covenant giver or you are an opportunity giver? I want to bless the tithe. If you are tithing this morning, please, you can stand. My father, I pray now that you will command the Malachi chapter 3 blessings on your children. 
you said you will open up the windows of heaven and command such a blessing over them. Now I pray that you will open up every avenue, every door. Give them favor by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the devourer be rebuked out of their life. You increase them as the world goes towards the recession. May recession never come near their dwelling place. May their businesses thrive in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. Amen. Remain standing tithers. Those of you that are giving whatever seeds, first fruits, offerings, anything that you are giving, please stand. And we are going to give together in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down shall men. Shall men. Out of the eight billion people, there are men who are holding substance in their hands. Waiting for a command from the Lord to come into your life and release it. These are men who are in high positions in your job who are going to be moved by God to give you a raise and an increase. These are clients who would have never come to your business to do business with you. But because you are giving, God is going to turn their hearts. And they will come into your businesses to come and write that million dollar contract. So raise your offering to the Lord and I'm going to bless it. Father, I pray now that you command a blessing into your children's lives. You said, give and it shall be given, shall men. I pray now you raise the men to come. Raise the people to come. Raise institutions to rise and pour into their lives in the name of Jesus. And the people say, amen. amen. Remain standing, those of you that are still seated, unless you are pregnant. <laughs> and she stood real fast. <laughs> There's only one pregnant person that I see. Said Risha back there. She was the one who stood the fastest. <laughs> Please raise your seed. And as we are making a declaration, you are prophesying into that seed. You are prophesying into that seed. Are you ready to prophesy? All right, on three, go. This is my seed. And pour out many blessings over my life. So much so that there will not be enough room to contain them. I receive healing for my body. I receive financial breakthrough. I lack nothing good all the rest of my days. I live in plenty. As for me and my house. Amen. You may be seated, and the blessings from God have been dispatched on your behalf. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. On Wednesday, we began a new series entitled The Authority of a Believer. Tell your neighbor, I have authority from the Lord Jesus. Now, before you say it again this time, I want you to understand that this authority you have is complete authority over all the powers of the enemy. If you understand the word of God, the enemy has the rankings in the kingdom of darkness. They are what are called principalities, powers, rulers, the mighty dominions, and all of the powers of the enemy combined, they are not able to match up to the authority that God has given you. The problem with, with us is many of us do not understand our God-given authority that we have. It is for that reason that God says in the book of 
for there that my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. I told someone a story about a woman in Las Vegas, uh, in New York. One of those very bitter New York winters. In the morning as the security guards came out of the building to unlock the building at one of the tallest buildings in New York, they found a woman in front of the building froze to death. She died right in front of the building. So they informed the authorities, and the authorities had to inform the next of kin. So they did all kinds of background investigation, and what they discovered was very heartbreaking. That woman had been homeless for nearly 20 years in New York. In their investigation, they ran into a group of lawyers that had been looking for that woman. So the lawyers went to the authority and says, the woman that you are, you have informed us that she passed away, she was the only existing daughter of one of the richest people in New York. That woman was a product of a love child between the billionaire and the housemaid. When the billionaire found out that his maid was pregnant, he gave her money and his advisor signed certain documents that she would not come out in the public and dis di disclose that, you know, this maid has a child with a billionaire. So they sent her money and sent her out of state. Twenty years later, the woman, her mother dies and she ends up on the street and she moves to New York. The billionaire in his old age instructs his lawyers, I have a child. Who is going to take over my nearly $40 billion worth of estate? Go look for my daughter and give her this estate. She is the only existing heir that I have. That woman moved around New York, one of the wealthiest people in New York, but she was one of the poorest people because she did not know she was wealthy. That fateful night, it was too cold. And she came to seek shelter underneath the building that actually belongs to her. And she had no idea the building she was dying outside was her own building. Had she known this was my building, she would have gone there, introduced herself, and gone to the, the penthouse, which was already waiting for her. But she died in ignorance. How many of us God's people are dying when our Father has given us everything we can ever wish for. How many of us are carrying sickness and pain in our bodies when our Father has provided healing for our bodies? See, it's getting too quiet in this church. I know you are disturbed by the story, but I need you to understand that it is the lack of knowledge that destroys God's people, not the absence of power, not the absence of authority. It's simply ignorance. Ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? I, I think you are, you are, are you terrified of your neighbor? Ask them like you are asking your child, do you know who you are? The devil's strategy is to keep you ignorant from who you are. Sometimes he will let you know God, but keep you from knowing who you are. Because he knows the moment you know who you are, then you step into your place. So some of us, we know God, but we don't know who we are. We know God is able, but we don't know we are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. The, the, we know that God says with God all things are possible, but some of us, we don't know that the Bible says to him that believes nothing shall be impossible. 
We, we don't know that if you simply believe in your heart that before you, you, you die and exit this planet, that you are able to go further than your fathers ever went. That you can shake yourself out of every limit the devil puts you in. That you can tell the devil that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That you can break the limits of poverty over your life and ascend out of poverty to become the first multi-millionaire. Oh, I came to raise the standard and to declare an anointing for those of you that want to understand that God is waiting for people to receive revelation in their hearts and they can declare to the devil, I am better than this. I am way stronger than this. I am way more anointed than this. I refuse the identity the world has given me because I am a child of God. The devil is banking on you staying in ignorance to your true identity. He wants you to know Jesus is on the throne, but as long as you stay right where you are, he's okay. And every time you begin to challenge the devil over your identity, he gets mad. But how many of you are going to make the devil angry before the year is over? How many of you are going to say, I will not leave 2024 the way I lived in 2023? I, I want to think above my natural mind can ever comprehend. I want to I wanna raise the expectation for the outcome of my life. The moment you begin to challenge that, Oh, the devil gets angry, but ah, we are not here to babysit the devil. We are going to challenge the devil for who we are in Christ. If every other Christian is going to accept whatever the devil allows them to get, I am going to say, wait a minute, devil, I, I am way better than this. There's a lot more to me than what I have already been told. Are we together today? So this series is designed to unlock the authority in you that God has given you. So today, we are going to be discussing with what is called the hidden word. The hidden word. We are looking at Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, Psalm chapter 119. Verse 130. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have for this church. Thank you for blessing your people that on Christmas Eve, you are going to release them from bondage, from shackles, from chains, from sickness, from generational curses, from the disorientation, from discouragement, from fear, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 119, please. Let's do the King James Version. The King James Version says, the entries of thy word giveth light. Somebody say light. One more time, somebody say light. We understand that light comes to expel darkness. In the beginning, when God saw complete pitch darkness on planet earth, the Bible says the first thing God spoke out of his mind was let there be light but in the original it's not let there be because if god is saying let there be light then god is giving light an option so when god is commanding he doesn't give things an option he give, gives a command when god gives a command it means that whatever subject or object he's speaking into does not have a choice but to follow the command have you noticed that every time Jesus prayed for someone, Jesus would always say, rise up? He never said, can you rise? Because if Jesus says, can you rise, somebody's going to respond and say, I still feel weak. 
light be. That means that light had no choice but to be. Somebody say, life change. You know what that means? It means your life is going to change whether the devil likes it or not. Life change. Door open. The door has no choice but to open because the command has been released into the door. Door open. When we are praying for the bondage, we don't say bondage may be broken. You say bondage break. No matter how strong the bondage is, it has to what? Respond to your authority. The entries of thy word gives what? Life. Watch this. And it gives understanding unto the simple. Do, do I have your permission to dissect and break the word of the Lord this morning? In our generation, I have become very aware that very few of us are investing time in studying the word of God. Because many of us are busy living life. And please don't shut me down as I speak today. I, I, I need you to holla back at me. Preach back to me. You, you, you understand that many of us are busy living life. We, we are busy with our careers. We are busy with our jobs. We are busy with our schools. And those of us that are studying for exams, you realize that you are investing in your education but you are neglecting that most important part of you, and that is your well-being of your spirit. Many of us, we don't understand that if God is going to anoint anything in you, that God is going to anoint the word that you have received inside of you. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, where the word of the king is there is power. So if God is going to release authority in you, that authority is going to be based on the word. The problem I have is everybody wants to be a prophet and nobody wants to get the Bible. I'm coming, I'm coming, and I'm coming for everybody today. Everybody wants to prophesy, and the problem is your prophecy must have the backing of the word. If it's not backed by the word, you are operating in the spirit of the enemy. Fortune tellers, they don't need the Bible. Because the spirit on them is not from God. But if you are going to be in a prophetic anointing, first of all, the word has to sink into your spirit. And then the prophetic anointing is going to function over your life. Oh, we are not getting as many amens. Because everybody, pray for me, I need to prophesy. Pray for me, I need to prophesy. Pray for me. But if God is going to give you a prophetic anointing, the first thing he wants to see in you is the word of God. Because realize that when Jesus was contending with the devil in the, in, in the, in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was not prophesying to the devil. Oh, you guys are too quiet on me. The devil came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, Jesus did not say, Shadabaka, for it is written, in the beginning was the word. No, all Jesus did was to tell the devil what the word said. Jesus was not trying to prove, because some of us would have proved right there. You turn the stones into bread. I say, what kind of bread? Italian bread? A Mexican bread, Nigerian bread, Zimbabwean bread. Do you want pickles on the bread? Do you want sausage on the bread? Because if I am Jesus, I have all the power to prove. But Jesus understands if I don't release the word, then the devil has an advantage over my life. So Jesus oftentimes would move back and move the word forward. There is a need in our generation for Christians to go back into the word and start building.
putting your faith on the word and not on the human understanding. It is possible to have faith. But you understand that when your faith is not backed up by the word, it is going to wither. This is the reason we are having seasonal Christians who are here January and by December they are no longer in the house of God because their faith in January was standing on excitement. Oh, the amens have gone out of the church, but God is still going to release this word. We, we don't have people who are living long in the body of Christ today because what is keeping them in the house of God is excitement. Where we have people who are drawn to the church by the prophetic and not the word of God. By the deliverance and not the word of God. By the healing and not the word of God. That's the reason they are not lasting when the temptation comes. If your rent is, pay, is not paid, then God is not for you. If you wake up with a toothache, then God is not for you. But when you have the word, I don't care if they diagnose you with cancer. You can still stand up and say, even if he slay me, yet will I praise him. If my rent is not paid, I will believe God to provide a place for me. Because the word of God said, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither there are children begging for bread. Oh, I see a breaking anointing in the house. Come on, tell your neighbor, get the word, get the word. High five three people. No, if there's anything you are doing in 2024, is to get the word in your spirit. Because where God wants you to go, you need the word in your spirit. Oh, devil, I will release this prophetic word to somebody today. You have to. You have to. Those of you that are saying all I need is finances, let me tell you that there's a place finances cannot hold you. I know you are praying for financial breakthrough. Financial Every time I'm, I'm, I'm on that platform on Thursday night, 90% of the prayer request is healing and financial breakthrough. Healing and financial breakthrough. But there is a gift from God, and that is the word. If and when you get the word in your spirit, season come and season go but you are still going to be unmoved in your life if the devil get your car the word will give you a better one I, I, I think somebody knows over there if they fire you from your job but you have the word the word will open up a door and you will walk into something better and something bigger because the word of God is the light unto my feet the word is the light unto my path Today we can hardly tell who is a genuine prophet and who is not. Because we don't have the word. Anybody, oh no, not anybody. Anything that comes to you and says, that saith the Lord, you follow through. Because we don't have the word in us. We don't have the word in us. Anyone who has a smartphone and can go as live stream, they become prophets. Because we don't have the word. And many of us are Falling according to James chapter 5, chapter 4, we are living, departing from our faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. We, we cannot tell what is an anointing and what is a seducing spirit. And when we finally crashed, then we are saying it was God who told me. It wasn't God. I know it sounded like God, but it's not God. Because if the devil is going to come to you, he is going to mimic God. The devil knows how to imitate God. He will walk like God. He will manifest like God. He will sound like God, but he's not God. Oh, you guys are way too quiet on me today. If there's any prophetic anointing word I'm giving you today, is get the word in your spirit. So the next time that angel shows up, you're like, wait a minute. Just because you are bright and shining don't mean anything. It won't make me fall down to my knees. Who are you? Who sent you? That you are able to challenge an angel. The Bible says if an angel comes and preaches a different gospel. Let that angel be accursed. Today we have people that are telling you that it's okay for a man to marry another man. As long as.
they believe in God. And you guys are okay. And you are considering that's normal. Oh, you guys are, you, you didn't see that coming. Oh, you didn't see that coming. Listen, I'm in a black suit, which means I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what bishop allows a man to marry a man. According to the word, it cannot be done. I don't care how fine she is. If she's a woman, you are a woman. It is a spirit from hell. The word has laid a standard for God created a man to be with a woman. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. 80% of Christians in America are now approving bisexual relationships. Because many of us, we have lost touch with the word of God. Because the devil is telling you, you know, all men are dogs, so you try a woman. It, check in the Bible. Check in the Bible. I don't care. If you are a daughter in this church and those thoughts have been coming to you, I stand on this platform under the anointing of God. That lesbian spirit that has been haunting you, I break it out of your mind by the power of the Holy Ghost. That homosexual spirit that the devil has been charging over you, I break it out of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, according to the word of God. You are not going to come here and tithe, I don't care. Before you came, the church was, after you are gone, the church will be. God said, I will build my church on this rock and the gates of hell shall not prosper. God will always raise people to fund the church. But that doesn't mean I will not talk about it. The word is the standard. Come on, somebody say, I'm hungry for the word. Am I offending somebody yet? Good, we are doing good. I want to preach until you are offended. So when we go for lunch, I want somebody to look at me and say, Lord, let him choke with the bone. Let him drown in that cup of Kool-Aid. So offended, you will delete the church Facebook page. So on judgment day, I'll stand before the Lord squeaky clean that I preach the gospel without compromise. Somebody say amen. I don't care what prophet is telling you to marry who loves you. That's not what the Bible says. Because sometimes there are, there, there are, some, there are some people a man is going to be possessed with a spirit, a lustful spirit, and he's going to be lusting after another man. Is that the love God is talking about? So then that declaration to love whoever loves you, that's not spiritual. That's not scriptural. For this reason shall a man leave his what? Mother and father, and he shall cling to his what? Wife. The definition of a wife is not a man who was born a man and went through a gender transfer. And recognize themselves. I know this sounds homophobic, but I'm simply quoting the scripture. It's the word. That is what a, ma a woman is not what a man, a man's definition of a woman today. If you came out of your mother's belly and you look like a boy, I don't care what happened from birth until now. You, according to the scripture, you are a woman. Oh, I know this. Some people are gonna, you know, flag this on Facebook. That's okay. We will start our own GFC book. <laughs> Somebody has to preach it, and I just happen to be that brother who has it today. Look at us. The Bible says the entries of the what. That word entries is the word pethiac. It means disclosure. The word disclosure means to broadcast. 
not to whisper, to broadcast. Now, if you understand, if you, are, if you have done anything with television, in order for you to broadcast, you are going to have what are called signals. And these signals are going to be beamed into space through satellites. Do you now understand why the word has to be spoken? The, 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 you guys are way too quiet on me. I, I like this group here. <laughs> I think I would have really brought some anointing here. <laughs> Disclosure means to beam the word into the satellite, into the space, into the spirit. You know why? Because everything you are contending with is not on earth. They are in the spirit. The Bible says, my God, I feel an anointing. The Bible says, and an angel from the Lord came. He was given an answer and a breakthrough and deliverance and an open door. For who? Daniel. As he was coming, the prince of Persia, where? In the spirit, held him for how many days? 21 days. As we are seated right here, we are waiting for our breakthroughs. Some of our angels, Dr. Lungi, they are suspended in the spirit. They should have been coming on earth in 2001. They are nearly 23 years delayed in the spirit. You know why, Pastor Zindri? Because many of us, we don't understand the ability to broadcast. I thought you guys, let me try somebody over there. Tell your neighbor, broadcast. God told Joshua, do not let the law of this book depart from your mouth. But do what? Meditate when, day, and night. What is meditation? Meditation is not. Isn't that what the Western civilization thinks meditation is? Because someone from, from, from China came and told you guys how to get rid of stress, not knowing that this is simply worshipping an idol. And there are churches that have adopted these this demonic practices. You, th there's nothing such as meditation that you do this and you go into a trance. No, it's nothing like open your mind, leave your mind blank. That's the devil. Meditation is broadcasting. You stand on the word and you send the word in the spirit and you say, by his stripes, I am healed. What are you doing? You are sending a signal into the demonic realm that is causing you to be sick. You guys are way too quiet on me today. Before the year is over, God is looking for someone that's about to be radical enough and start broadcasting your business in the realm of the spirit and say, according to God, I'm supposed to be a Maori millionaire. So every spirit of poverty and stagnation and hindering spirit and witchcraft in the realm of the spirit, hear my voice. If you are a student, shout whoop whoop. Students, don't just write an exam without broadcasting your results in the spirit. Students, that's surprising. L let me try the non-students. Do, do not go and write a contract and put in your application for the mortgage, application for a car, application. Do not ever submit that without you broadcasting disclosure in the spirit. You have to go there and let the devils know what God has poured in your spirit. You have to send the word, the signals in the spirit and say, wait a minute, this is the last time I am going to write an exam and I will not repeat the class. Broadcast. But the church is, is so deceived, more especially in America. The African church, they got it. The African church, they are moving around praying loud. Shada Kabo, the Jamaican church, they got it in America. No, you got to be soft. Not understanding that the realms of the spirit only recognize the radical. For the kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent will take it 
by force. But the devil wants you to just be so nice, not knowing that the realm of the spirit is waiting for a broadcaster that is able to send a signal in the spirit and say, wait a minute, devil, you stop my mother, you stop my father, you stop my sibling. But as for me and my house, we cannot be stopped. I have come to understand who I am. I am the righteousness of God. I am the apple of God's high. I am healed and not sick. I am blessed and not cursed. And hear me from today, you can never stop me. Come on, tell you never broadcast. Disclosure. The entries of the word when the word comes it is not silent it is broadcast around the realms of the spirit i've never been afraid of witches to know my secrets i want my secrets known into the witchcraft realm i want my plans known to the witches because they are not mad given plan they are god given plan for the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. If God's plans for me, no devil from hell can ever shut them down. So while you're at it, broadcast your house in the realm of the spirit. Get a picture, put it on your Facebook and say, my future house. Come on, while we are at it, print a picture of a car. Put it on the Facebook and say, my future car. Let the realm of the spirit know you drive a Kia today by 2024. I, I don't know who needs to hear this. I know they diagnosed you with a deadly disease, but send the message in the spirit that by the stripes of Jesus, I will not be sick anymore. Start announcing marriage in the next 12 months. Send a message in the realm of the spirit. The devil is a liar. Y'all get ready to come to my wedding. I know I don't have a boyfriend yet, but the Bible declares it's not good for man to be alone. Send a signal in the spirit. I'm a preaching God. The devil wants you to just accept whatever he puts in your path. Mm -mm. Ask your neighbor, are you radical enough to, fast, to fight for what you believe? Now, the, the, I don't like the way they sounded, so you yell at them and say, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure that the next seven days of this year, I am putting up the sword of the spirit. I am getting a high heel, a spoon, a knife, a machete, bow, an arrow. If I don't have a, a AK-47, I'm about to get whatever I can fight. But I'm marching down the gates of hell and said, devil, enough is enough. I've been waiting for somebody to give me, but now the time to wait is over. I'm here to take it by force. They tell you to just wait. The question is, you, you are human. You only have a good about 90 years or 60 years or so to your life. And are you going to spend half of it waiting? That's what the devil wants you to do. He's just sit over there. Meanwhile, the ungodly are waking day and night. They are pursuing their own dreams, but they are telling you to sit there and wait. The devil is a liar. Come on, tell your, tell your neighbor, broadcast. In the broadcasting system, we have who are called reporters. We have who are called reporters. A reporter, is some, this is from Fox News reporting. And I want to stand before the devil and report what the father is doing in my life. Are we together? The second meaning for that word is opening. Somebody shout opening. opening. Now look at your other neighbor and say open. open. Pathiak means open. It simply means when the word is given, there isn't a power from hell that will keep the door closed. 
<laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's the thing is, see, the devil wants you to just stand outside of that door. Even after the word is given, he wants you to just stand outside the door. But understand that when the word comes, the door has to open. Come on, somebody shout open. open. Can we declare 2024 is the year of open doors? I hear faith on this side here. So watch this now. Pathiac open. When the word is given to a non-believer, the word will pursue that non-believer with what is called conviction. Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. What is knocking? Conviction. The Bible says, and the spirit of God will come and he will convict the world of its sin. How does the spirit come into the world? He comes through the spoken word. And the Holy Ghost told me, brother, the reason some people get offended with you when you share the gospel is they feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Because as you are sharing your testimony and you mention the name of Jesus, their heart cannot handle the conviction. So now the demons inside of their hearts, they begin to manifest because they feel uncomfortable. You can get the most unbelieving person standing before the word of God. The word of God will prevail. It doesn't matter who they are. This could be the highest ranking witch in the city. When the word, I'm talking about the word, the rhema word, the logos word. It will prevail. And the doors are going to be open. The word of God cannot be shut outside. Now look at this. The broadcasting of thy word giveth what? Come on everybody, say shout light. That word light is O-W-R. O-W-R. Somebody shout light. That word simply means daybreak. Daybreak. No matter how dark the night tallies, their break is coming. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm preaching to somebody who's been walking in the dark. But you've been hanging on there saying, don't die. Joy is coming in the morning. So light. What happens is when light begins to come, the, the sun doesn't have to rise. When the sun is about to rise, it begins to cast its light. And what happens to the darkness is darkness is pushed out of the way. Darkness is replaced by the what? The light. Somebody shout light. light. That word all W R means show. Somebody say show. show. So when the word enters, you are going to see. You know, Dr. Tando, what the Lord told me? The seeing doesn't occur with the natural eyes. It takes place in your mind. Tell your neighbor, my mind has eyes. I'm preaching real good. I can hear money over there saying he does. <laughs> Come on, tell your other neighbor, my, 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 mind my mind has eyes. Do you know that most of the things we believe God for, these are the things your mind has seen? I'm sorry. Let me try somebody over there. Ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? See. The, the, the problem with the new generation church is we see what our physical eyes can see. But there is another realm into this life that your naked eyes have never seen. 
And if God is going to show you something, he will not show it with your physical eyes. He will come into the mind and project it into the eyes of your mind. Tell your neighbor, I see. Things are going to be all right. Nah, I don't like the way your neighbor said it. They, they don't see it. Now tell your other neighbor, I see. Your life is about to change. So, so God is looking for people in this church and those of you that are watching that when you look around you, you see an apartment. But your mind has gone beyond the apartment. Your mind is now in a 5,700 square foot house and you are looking at your chikuzi with marbles. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You are looking at a five bedroom house, four car garage. It's there, your mind can say it. So you are not moved by what your eyes are seeing. Your eyes are seeing $27.29 in your bank account, but your spiritual eyes have gone beyond into the spirit. Tell your neighbor, God showed it to me. So you understand, God doesn't reveal it to you when you have plenty, but God shows it to you when you have nothing. That's the reason we don't jump off the bridge. We don't pull the trigger and kill ourselves. What we do is close our eyes and be translated into the realms of the spirit to see what the eyes cannot see. I, I don't know who needs to hear this. But you understand that the problem is convincing yourself that what you see in your mind is real. Come on, one more time. Ask your neighbor, do you see what I see? You see, this is the reason, Dr. Tando, many of us cannot embrace depression because we know that weeping and crying may only endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. How do we know? We've seen it in our eyes that this pain is not forever. I think I'm preaching better than you are responding today. I want to preach to someone who has seen a prosperous future. I want to preach to someone who has seen your tiny little company grow to become a multi-million dollar level. I want to preach to somebody who's walking here saying, I can see churches. The chairs are full of angry people. Tell somebody, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it, I see it. You're going to go to that level while you are still single, but you've seen your spouse. I'm sorry, wrong people. You don't have a spouse, but you see yourself with children. You, you don't have a car, but you see yourself parking a car. You are working for somebody, but you see yourself as a business owner. You are still waiting for your green card, but you see yourself a citizen. Tell somebody, I see it. So light, light shines in our minds. Light doesn't shine in our physical eyes. It shines in our mind. Because if your mind comprehends it, and then it sends a signal into your spirit, then your mind is able to release what is called faith. For the Bible says, faith is the substance of things. One second, Joy. Let me preach this thing tonight. We don't have a second service. Is that okay? We don't have a second service. Is that okay? Faith is not based on what we see. Tell your neighbor, I see it. That's why I believe it. God is always going to show it to your mind. That's the reason we believe. We are not crazy. We are not foolish. It's real. It's real. Just like it is real to a person who gets high and they see stuff. The reason they are so paranoid and they, French word, Liana, you better not say this uh, at you with your friends. The reason we don't freak out. They do because it's real. Their mind begins to show them things that is not on this earth. But connects them to a realm where everything is real. And they feel real fear. Wow. Yeah. Come on. Come on. 
our mind is able to comprehend things that our eyes have not seen. And God is saying at the entry of the word, when the word comes in, the word will go into your spirit. It will begin to show into your mind stuff your eyes have never seen. It's up to you to say, wait a minute, that what I see with my eyes closed is my life. The kind of a life I see is my life. The kind of a body I see, that's my body. I don't know who needs to hear this. That just because your age is advancing doesn't mean your body has to grow along with your age. That there are some of us whose mind we are saying, God, I know I'm nearly 50, but I want to look like I'm still 29. I'm sorry, ladies. That's, that's for, for you. Come on, Brother Jiva. You and I, I want to look at myself and say, wait a minute, I'm still 15. High metabolism. I can eat whatever. And don't have a one pack because I see it in the spirit. Ask your neighbor one more time. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? If they don't see what you see, it's okay for them to disagree because they've never entered your mind. It's okay for them to think you're crazy. They've never entered your mind. But their lack of faith should not rub it on you. God showed it to me. That one day we will have a mega church. That one day we will feed the nations. That one day ambulances will come to drop the people coming for deliverance. That a day is coming when our members will write a million dollar check a month as a tithe. That a day is coming. A day is... I've seen it. One more time, ask them, do you see what I see? I see Joy and Marcos are trying to run me off. We only have one service. I, 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 I want to milk this cow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever let the blindness of others become your blindness. Can, can, I, can, I, can I tell you deeper stuff? Sometimes, even in your own house, Dr. Dr. Lungi, that God will show you something that Dr. Chando will never see. And if and when you wait for him to be on your frequency, sometimes he could be 20 years behind. If you don't believe me, the Bible says a day is coming. Two are going to be working in the field. One will be taken and the other one will be left. Why? Because the other guy left. He was not on the frequency. So some of you men, some of you men, God's going to tell you to quit your job and start a business. But your wife is going to be, babe, if you do that, babe, how are we going to pay our bills, babe? And you know your wife is maybe nine months behind you in the frequency. So it's up to you to comfort her. And minister to her and said, babe, you married me my faith. You knew that God speaks to me. This is one of those things when it works, you are going to be the one who quits your job. So you can be a stay at home. Everybody read as loud as you can go. Look at verse 10. So, so no eye, no ear, no mind. Look at verse 10. But God has revealed to, to us by his word, spirit. How does the spirit reveal? Some of you are waiting for light and an angel to stand with feathers in the corner and speak. Oh, I am your God. No, he doesn't want to give you a heart attack. <laughs> then we'll be praying for healing. Be healed. What happened? I saw an angel. Now you are not able to sleep for the next 52 years. Because you know there are some angels that are going to show up with eyes in the wings. They, they are, their head looks like a lion. Their wings and they, their feet look like, there's no way you're going to sleep after that. So God says, I love you too much to paranoia you. 
So how does God speak to us? He slips into the subconscious of our mind. He goes into what is called the realm of the human soul. And there he shines the light. So you see something your eyes is not seeing, but you know it's real. Ask your neighbor one more time. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Oh, I'm preaching good today. Next year is going to be even a goodlier year. Is that a better year or goodlier? <laughs> better year. <laughs> now, go, go back to the book of Psalm. The entry of thy word gives what? Light. Somebody say light. O-W-R, light. That word, that word light also means set on fire. That word light means set on fire. On. Somebody says set on fire. You see, I can almost instantly discern who has the word in them by the way they react when the word hits their spirit. Because the word of God doesn't come like water on you. The word of God doesn't come. He will bypass your senses, which stimulates what I, what I call goosebumps. The word of God will pass all of that. What is the word going to do? Set you on fire. And the reason we have a lot of people who are so bored with church, they go to church, I wonder when he's going to stop. I wonder when he's going to stop. You know why? Because there ain't no fire on the inside of them. A person that is on fire, when they come to church, the flames are burning. Come on, raise your right hand and say, God set me on fire. I have prayed and I have asked the Lord, I don't want to run a church that is dead. I was not called to the dead church of America. I was called to resuscitate, to revive the dying church and set them on the fire of the Holy Ghost. John prophesied in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. A man is coming after me that is greater than I am. For he will baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and fire. Prophesy. Tell your neighbor I'm on fire today. I, I, now, now understand this. That the devil doesn't want you on fire. You know why? Be, how many of you have ever been grilling, barbecuing anything? Have you ever gone out of your mind to touch the live coal? In Africa, we call it charcoal for braai. Yeah. I had to relearn the word. is actually barbecue here. It's called braai in Africa. No one touches the live coal when it's hot. Why? It burns. Yeah. Now we understand why the devil wants a dirt church in America. Because he can come and touch you, touch your finances, touch your bones, touch your, your blood, touch your kidneys, touch your eyes, touch your ears, touch your brain, touch your business, touch your career. But God is saying the word of God enters and it brings what? Light. That word light is fire. When you are on fire, the devil cannot touch you when you are on fire. Come on, somebody say, Lord, set me on fire. This is my prayer. Before I get my house, God set me on fire. So I can set my house on fire. So the next time the devil want to come to my house, he will find an edge of fire around my house. You guys are not hearing me today. Before God, you give me my $1 million business, set it on fire. Set my company on fire. I want to be the CEO who greets people in tongues. Ah, what's up? Anna Sharade K. Sairaba. Make sure you pay the taxes for my company. And people who think you are crazy, they don't understand. You are on fire. You are on fire. The devil wants you to walk around lukewarm, dead. That's the reason many people on, on, in, in America, in the church, cannot wait for Jesus to return. Why? So they can escape. 
A lot of people in church are suicidal. They just don't want to die, kill themselves, but they are suicidal. Oh, I can't wait to go to heaven. No, let heaven wait. I have a business to do on earth. Come on, come on. Come on. If you're not clapping, you didn't understand that. Tell your neighbor, wait, heaven can wait one more minute. I have business to do on earth. I have my father's business to conduct on earth. The next time I want to walk in Walmart, I need one or two people at least to go, wait, wait a minute, something weird about you. When you walked past me, I felt fire. It's because there's fire in me. That's what God wants to do in our generation is to set people on fire. So you guys are going to give me a second. Let me finish what I have today because we are not having a second service today. Come on, raise your hand and say, Lord, set me on fire. Come on, Lord, set me on fire. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Makabosa. After today, your prayer life is changing. You are no longer praying, God, I need a car. God, I need a car. God, I need a car. Your prayer is going to be before the year is over. Set me on fire. Oh, set my bones on fire. Set my blood on fire. Set my bladder on fire. Set my kidneys on fire. Set my eyes on fire. Set my ears on fire. Set me on fire. Then I said, I will not make mention of him because the man is frustrated. I will not talk about God. No, speak anymore in his name. I won't even mention in his name. I won't prophesy in his name. I'm too frustrated. How can I speak God and yet the devil seems to be getting even more angry at me? I, I think it's better for me to not mention his name. Then the devil is going to leave me alone. Watch this. But his word was in me. In my heart as a burning what? Fire shot up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing. This is what it means. His word was in me like shut up like fire. I could not hold it but speak. God wants to raise you on fire until you are forced to open your mouth. Because the fire in you cannot be contained. You know, when you know anything about volcanoes, they will tell you that a volcano is going to build up when the pressure is too much, the volcano has to erupt. There are some of us. The devil came and put your life on fire. He thought he was going to burn you to consume you. Not knowing you are supposed to release the fire. And that fire is coming out of your mouth as what? Praise. That fire was going to come out of you as prayer. So instead of fire depression, it becomes fire worship. It becomes fire. Tell your neighbor, I'm on fire. For the word of God was shut up in my bones. So the entry of the word gives what? Light. It sets fire to your spirit. Parents, I got two kids. Parents, let fire be set to your children before they go to college. I have been working with a 16 year old. Making rules that in my house you have to be in church on Sunday. I know I'm not, I'm not going to win the best father's award of the century. But let me tell you, when my children go to college and they got fire in their belly and the devil shows up, they know how to deal with it. Because they saw their father on the pulpit deal with the fire. They saw their fire, their father go through fire at home, but come out on the other side and said, Devil, I was born in fire. When I go through fire, I don't burn. I was born in fire. So the devil's fire cannot consume me because I'm burning in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Raise your hand one more time as the Lord set me on fire. 
Come on, Lord, set me on fire. Now, let's look at that one last word and then we close. One last word. Go back to the book of Isaiah, the book of Psalm. It says, and it gives understanding to the simple. It gives understanding to the simple. So watch this. Watch this, watch this. That word simple, that word simple is P-T-H-I-Y. This is what it means. The simplicity. This is what the word it means. The open-minded. It gives light to who? The simple. The open-minded. The, the problem that we have, if we have a lot of people whose mind is cooked and whatever they were told by the Baptist assemblies of the Baptist in the 1922, that is what they believe. They will not budge. They won't change. A woman cannot preach because in my church where we grew up, a woman cannot preach. Well, if a woman gave birth to you, she better be able to prophesy to you. Come on, every woman say amen to that. A woman cannot be a leader because in my church, the Bible says Deborah was a leader. She was a wife and a leader. Open-minded. Open-minded. That the nation of Israel, Pastor Stanley, the nation of Israel was brought to its knees. They were four days from the extinction and every man gave up. Every man gave up. But this woman called Esther, she got up and she put herself on the line. She says, I will go to the king. If I die, I die. A woman. A woman. A woman. A woman. So if God can use a man, God can use a woman. But it will take someone with an open mind to believe. If God can use a donkey, why should he not speak to a woman? When you had women who could prophesy, you had the borers. You had the dockers who were the most wealthiest women in the community. That would walk into Bank of America and said, I came to withdraw my money so I can buy food and clothes and give it to the hungry. The Bible says when she died, they were not crying because she was a righteous woman. They were crying because she was a generous woman. Now that she's dead, who is going to feed us? And she was resurrected because of her righteous works. Open mind. Open mind. That there are people in America who don't believe a black man should be able to pastor white people. There are people in America who don't believe that a white pastor can, can pastor black people. There are people who don't believe. They don't believe it. They don't believe it that a man who has gone through divorce can counsel people who are going through marital dispute and problems in their marriage. Because they don't have an open mind. So they will avoid you because they don't think you got it. They don't understand that a mantle is a mantle. It's a spirit on the man and not a man. It's a spirit on a man. If I don't have a million dollars in my bank, but the mantle on my life is a billion dollars, it will take someone with an open mind to know. I, don't, I fly spirit airline, but my spirit flies chariots. But I can release a jet in my life to lay my hands on you. It requires someone with an open mind. Many people missed out on the blessings of Jesus because to them he was the son of a carpenter. When they were told, a king is coming from Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It requires an open mind. 
open mind. It requires an open mind for a man to go and marry a woman with children and he has no children and believe that she's going to be a great wife. Come on women, don't shut me down. It requires what? Open mind. Requires an open mind for you woman to know I had a child out of wedlock but that is not my destiny. My destiny is I can rebuild my life I can rise from the fall and the mistakes of my teens and the early 20s to become a prosperous Proverbs 21 woman. Open mind. Open mind. Requires open mind to know that I am a child of an immigrant, but that is not my destiny. Requires an open mind. To know that my folk may have gone through divorces and separation they can't stand each other but i can go into marriage and live happily ever after it requires an open mind it requires an open mind it requires an open mind that god is not looking for the perfect but god is looking for the submitted you, you guys are not saying anything right about now God is obsessed. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro. Looking for the perfect? No. Looking for the strong? No. Looking for the educated? No. Looking for the wise? No. Looking for the better? No. Looking for someone that says, God, I want to stand. I know I'm weak, but I want to stand. I know I'm one dollar short, but I want to stand. Here is my last question to you. Do you have an open mind to believe that God is about to use you to turn your whole family around? That, that reaction is not what I was expecting. I think somebody has an open mind over there. I know some of you, you look at your cousins and they are better than me. My other sisters are better than me. My other ones are better than me. They got it all going on. No, no, no. What God is looking for is an open mind to believe. I know I'm going through a mess right now. I know, but God can use me to break the yoke, to destroy the chains and put my family on the right path. Set my heart on fire. Do you have an open mind, those of you that are parents, that your most rebellious children, God can change them and bring them back into the house? Come on, come on, parents, I'm talking to you. Do you have that kind of an open mind that God is able to go? If they are in prison, he will show up in prison. He will convict them and cut their time in half and bring them out because of your ability to believe God. Do you have an open mind? that your life, your brokenness is going to become somebody's inspiration. Do you have an open mind that God is going to turn your story into a movie, into a song, into a book that millions of people are going to be sitting on the traffic stop saying, I cannot wait to get home to read it. Let me just read two more lines. Why do you have an open mind that your brokenness was to somebody's edification? have an open mind do you have an open mind it gives light to the simple it gives light to the open mind maybe I am the one God has been looking for Pastor Stanley maybe I am the one in the whole generation of my generations of my ancestors that maybe I'm the one that God came looking for that when he found my mama he said you know what her head is a little too stuck on the tradition that she was given by her father so i will let her go as far as her father then he came to my daddy and he saw the same reputation that when he came to me i was one of those guys that are saying god if you show me it can be done if you tell me it can be done if you take me there i'll stay if you tell me to build i'll build it i have an open mind i have an open mind can i pray for people with an open mind today that I believe in God that you are going to be the chosen generation. Do 
you believe my god i feel such an anointing do you believe that you are that person that god is going to use to reach your father that you are going to bring your father into the kingdom of god that you are going to intercede for that man you have that open mind Set my heart on fire for you. Come on, everybody, stand with me. For you. Set me on fire. set me on fire today I'm not coming for material stuff today I'm not coming for another house I'm not coming for a paycheck I'm not coming for marriage no friends I'm not coming for healing I'm not coming for breakthrough I just want you to bring that fire in my heart let the light enter my soul let your light enter my spirit let your light enter my mind let it burn like fire. I want to know your grace. I hear him. He tells me his heart is to set his people on fire. Those of you that really want to be on fire, raise your hands. Now, on the day of Pentecost, Dr. Tando, they cried out on the day of Pentecost. I don't think any one of them was praying for marriage. I don't think any one of them was praying for healing. They knew that once the fire came, it will bring whatever they needed. Come on. How many of you are going to make it a cry? And say, Father, your fire is what I need. Your fire is what I need. Now, raise your voice and ask him to baptize you with fire. Ask him, baptize me with fire. Baptize me with fire. Baptize me with fire. Come on. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire.
Now, I don't know who you are. There has been a cry in you. Since you were young, that love of a father, that love of a father, that presence of a father, but God is going to make you a great father to compensate for the absence. Don't allow fear. You are not going to fail as a father. He will teach you to be a father because you have a father in heaven who has loved you with an everlasting love. I don't know where your father is, but when I saw him, I heard in the spirit there has been an absence of a father. It's, it's as if you had been like without the covering like an orphan. I'm an orphan. I picked that up. But the Lord says he has been watching out for you. He has covered you. And he will make you a great father. And the Lord says where your father dreamt of, it will become your reality. You have seen your mothers break and cry to make ends meet. But God says, I brought you in this land so that you are going to be the Joseph to your generation. God says, there isn't a spirit in your father's blood that is going to hold you from walking into your destiny. So today I pray for you now that your faith will be restored. That your dreams will be restored. God says, yes, you had high hopes for the school, but that door seemed to have shut. God said, I had a plan for your life. God says, that did not take him by surprise. God says, he still has another door for you. And that door is going to open up and you are going to be established. I pray for you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Set me on fire. 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 behind you there's that young man with glasses yes I have to pray for that young man because of what the Lord told me the young man with glasses yes 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 the Lord told me most of the men in your family they they fight with what is known as a devourer of time the devourer of time is a spirit that comes to steal time. Most of the men. What that means is many of them have their time taken by incarceration where they, it follows them no matter what they do. And the Lord says, Satan had set a trap for you to go in the same path. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You understand what incarceration is? Yes, sir. The Lord says he will not let you go down that path. God says, if I don't pray for you today, in just a few months, you, there was a trap that would have started a long life journey of you go out, you go in, you go out, you go in. Because what I see in the spirit is that is what is in your home right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Is this true? Yes, sir. What is going on in your house? What, what is this? What, what, what is this? What is what, sir? Do, do you want to... I know, are you here for the first time? Yes, sir. Okay, so no, so nobody told me. Who brought you? Uh, the Wally Tubana family. I'm sorry? The Wally Tubana family. Okay, okay, okay. So, so is what I'm saying making any sense? A little, sir. A little? 
You are not familiar with people going in and out of incarceration? No, sir. I'm sorry? No, sir. No, sir. Incarceration. To, to go in to, to be arrested, to be pulled over, arrested and stuff. No, sir. Okay. The Lord says, I needed to pray for you today because of the path that the enemy has put ahead of you. And I'm hearing there's a, there's a way that seems right to a man, but it's a trap. I do not know what you are doing, who you are hanging out with, but there's a trap on your life that follows a pattern on your family. That I hear in my spirit, and I am not going to budge on that. I need you to hear my voice. The next time a temptation come in your life to get involved with the wrong group and go along with them, there's a trap over your life. And the first time it happens, it will start a reaction that it will put you in the system for the rest of your life. Remember this. It's a warning from the Lord. Don't do that. God says, if you surrender your life today, there is a door that God is opening up to reclaim what your fathers have lost. So this is a message from the Lord. God wants to preserve you. Paul, go ahead and put your hands on him. Father, I pray for this young man by the mercies of the Lord that you preserve him, you bless his home in the name of Jesus, that you are going to impact him with favor, that where the men in his family have failed to go, that he will go, that he will succeed, that even though it's been hard for him to, to, to rise in his academics, but because he came today, let him rise. Let the doors open. Let him go back and try this time. It will work in Jesus' name. And somebody shout amen. I have one more and then we are going to pray. The, the man in a suit, yes, that man in a suit over there. You are here for the first time, right? Yes, yes. Who invited you? My friend bless him. Your, your, your friend bless him. At first, when I, when, I, when I laid my eyes on you, the Lord, I heard the word, and I'm, I'm, I've anointed him. And I literally thought, okay, he's anointed for what? For business. The Lord says, not just that. God says, there's anointing, there's a stirring. There has been a stirring on your life to start or rather to finish what your fathers did. Prayers, consecration, serving God. The Lord says there's a calling on your life that you need to stop running from. When you submit to that calling on your life, everything else that you have been pursuing is going to be established in your life. Amen. There's a calling. The Lord says most of the time he has appeared to you when you are laying in your bed, when you are asleep. He's given you dreams that are futuristic. Is that correct? Correct. The Lord says when you submit to the call over your life, God says it's going to bring you into the path that your fathers began a long time ago, but they did not complete. It's as if they started building the house, but halfway through they stopped because of challenges. God says he will give you grace to go beyond and finish what they started. Amen. God says, I have to strengthen your heart because what failed in the past, you are tempted to do the right things in the wrong season, it failed. So that doesn't mean it was not the right thing to do. It was just not the right time. God says, now go back this time, it's going to work. It's going to work. So three things the Lord is, is saying you are going to accomplish. God says you are going to accomplish the school, the education. God says you are going to go and serve him. And then God is going to build your family. You tried in the past. It wasn't the right time. God says now after today, you are walking into the right season where these three are going to come in alignment with the season of God. And you are going to see them come to pass. Your hands are anointed. The gift is in your hands. The gift is in your hands. God says you will build. You will build.
Can we, can we bless the name of the Lord today? Now, we have lunch, but I have to lay my hands on some of you that can feel that burning in your spirit. I don't want to just dismiss you because remember, we don't have a 5 p.m. service. So I'm going to pray for those of you that are saying, Pastor Joseph, pray for me. There's a stirring in my spirit for the fire of God. There's a stirring in my spirit for the fire of God. I'm going to make an altar call for you to come. Now, I have to make another altar call. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we, we are only one week away, one week away from crossover. We have flyers. Those of you that handed out all your flyers and you need more flyers, after, in fact, right now, raise your hands and ushers are going to pass them out to you. I need you to just do not put them on the card. Give it to someone and tell them it will mean a lot if you come. Those words are going to go into their mind and in their spirit. And you're going to see a lot more responses. All right. Those of you that want to help to pass out the flyers, let me see your hands. Thank you for the hands. Thank you for the hands. Ashes, move very prompt. Let's go ahead and do that. I, I want to pray for people today that are on fire. I want to pray for people that are on fire today. Some of you that are saying, I want that fire to be rekindled. I want my dreams to be rekindled. I'm tired of having nightmares. I want to start having what I call dreams, visions of the night. Visions of the night. Visions of the night. Intentionally this week, go to Walmart, not for shopping, go to Walmart, just pass them out. When you are at the gas station, give it over to someone and pray over them. Amen. If you do Lyft or Uber, whatever it is, every customer that comes in, tell them, here you are. Someone you know who needs healing, this is the place to be. How many of you are coming to crossover service next week? Let me see your hands. Oh, I am excited for, for the crossover. So listen, guys. I need you to start calling someone after the service is over today and start making appointment for next week, Sunday night, 9 p.m. If you drive a scooter overloaded with two other people. <laughs> you drive a Prius, you know. In Zambia, that thing will carry 10 people. So start making an appointment today. Call people. Guys, you are coming with me to crossover. You are coming with me to crossover. So I, I want to pray for two, two people. The first altar call is going to be those of you that are saying, God, set me on fire. That's the first oracle. Now, I need, I need to, maybe it could be a few of you, but we have a budget that we need to raise in this church. And I need those of you that would feel it in your heart to give a special offering to meet the budget. I want to pray for you today. Uncle Sam is there as, you know, he's the one who handles all the finances. He will tell you what's needed. After the service is over, you can go there and say, Uncle Sam, What's needed to meet the budget for the month of December? But I want to pray for those of you that are saying, man of God, I want to I wanna give a special offering to meet the budget for the month of December. Those of you that are willing to give a special offering for the month of December, I want you to raise your hand and ushers give an envelope to everyone whose hands are raised up. And please, I want you to walk forward and I want to pray for you today that as you stand with the church financially, the Lord is going to open the doors within the next few days that God is going to supply all your needs supernaturally. Amen. Those of you, in fact, just walk forward and ushers will meet you here. Ushers, I need you to run quickly, 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 quickly because I want to pray for people. I want to pray for people. Yes. I know the month of November and December, we, we have to do what we have to do. You are the ones I have been praying for that God is going to give you the resources to finance this church. To finance this church. We are not going to call Oprah. My prayer is for all of you that are here. Because you eat from this altar. You eat from this altar. 
make sure the people that are Mina, you can stay right here people that are coming up yes I want to pray a special blessing for you guys so I pray yes those of you that are coming you, you feel the prompt in your heart you don't have to feel pressured if you feel the Holy Spirit is leading you to give towards the month of December the budget towards the month of December this is you this is you Oh yes, can, can we can we can I have the Zell information back there? So those who want to Zell, they can Zell it. This is our church and it is our responsibility to do this. And I want to pray all of you guys a special prayer. This season is going to pass. God has shown me a system is coming in place. A system is coming in place. This is we just have to hang in there and do whatever we have to do. So we don't come to church and, and the light bill is cut off. So we'll be having a church in the dark. No, that's not going to be this church. And I'm praying for those of you that are giving. Close your eyes and raise that offering that you have. And those of you that are watching on TV, you can, you can also give towards the month of December. Because we are not even halfway through the budget. But I would like us to raise enough to cover the whole month. So we don't have to tell any of the pastors that we are not able to, to give you allowances to feed your children. The devil is alive. That's not, our, that's not our portion. So those of you that are watching, maybe one or two or all of you that are watching, the information is on your screen. And I want you to participate. So Father, I pray now. The anointing, everybody keep standing. I'm going I'm to have you guys come forward for prayer for the fire. So please remain standing. Father, I pray for your people now who are giving to meet the budget this month. You know that many of them are not giving because they have plenty. They are giving because they believe this is their responsibility. And by so doing, they are proving you can trust them with much more. They are sowing with tears. They are sowing with tears in their eyes. Now I pray, by your mercy and your grace, open the windows of heaven. And command a blessing over their mind, their lives. Those who have little in the next six days by, by Saturday, open the doors for them. May they come to testify this Sunday that the door has been opened. I command doors to be opened for their businesses and their income in the name of Jesus. May doors be opened. May favor be shown to you. May favor be your necklace. May you never know what lack of poverty is as you get into the next level. In Jesus' name. And those of you that are giving, say amen. Amen, amen and amen. Ashes, go ahead and ash. Thank you, Mina, for all you do and the rest of the ashes. In Jesus' name. Make sure you feel that information, guys. You feel that information. And I'm going to give, please, Uncle Sam, remind me uh, to do my offering, my special offering for, for this as well. Now, I want to pray for those of you in the next five minutes. For those of you that are praying for that new fire in you, you, you want to be set on fire. Run to the front quickly. You want to be set on fire. And come up here. I'm stretching the service, y'all, because we don't have a 5 p.m. service. Those of you that are in your homes, start praying, asking God for the fire. Asking God for the fire. Asking God for the fire. You come forward, guys, go and cry out to the Lord for fire. Fire doesn't come because you just prayed. Fire, you are stirring your spirit. You have opened your spirit. You are crying out, I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be cold. As I move into the next level, the next year, set me on fire. Set me on fire.
I release that fire on you. Never again will you be subject to the violation of the devils. Today I declare you will be a terror to witches. You will be a terror to witchcraft. You will be a terror to curses. Receive the fire. Fire! That's it. 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 That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. 
baptise de mon fire baptise de mon fire be baptized now Mina into the fire of God you will burn in your heart for the fire of God Baptize, baptize, baptize. Be baptized. Never again will you walk in the flesh. Spirit of God manifest in him. You can never walk like a mere mortal. You will never walk like a mere mortal. The spirit of divinity, the spirit of God, the ancient of days is on you. Spirit of God, now enter her spirit and shine light in the soul. Set her soul on fire. Be free. Now. Now. That's it. That's it. That's it. Spirit of God burning her. Every part of her body that is under the devil, let every spirit cry out. Let her be free. Let her be free. Now, in the name of Jesus, that's it. The fire burns. Depression goes. Anxiety goes. Curses go. Get out of her. In the name of Jesus. On the pulpit. Place your hands on your belly. No more walking around as just another motto another mayor man today you receive the spirit of God he that raised Jesus from the dead and he will not just be in you for goosebumps but he will teleport you he will take you into the dimensions of the spirit where eyes have not seen ears have not heard where the mind has not understood there you will encounter the resurrected Jesus now father Ignite a fire in her that cannot be quenched. Let the fire for your kingdom burn. The fire, the passion for Jesus. Be baptized with fire. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yes, you. this man of God ignite him with an unusual passion an unusual passion for the spirit of God make him to be hungry that the Holy Spirit will awaken him at 3.15 for intimacy to connect him to his redeemer Jesus the resurrected Lamb of God Spirit of God open his natural eyes to see beyond the realm of this world let him see the spiritual things let him know let him encounter the spirit of God now baptize him with fire fire in you that you have never known Alex let it burn in your bones
let's stand, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand. There's such a glorious atmosphere here. And I hear the Lord says, never again will my people be captives. Come on, shout a bit of amen. If you are in this building, you will never be a captive to any spirit from the kingdom of darkness. You will never be a victim. You will never be victimized in any area of your life, says the spirit of the Lord. Today, every limit over your life is broken. Those of you that run businesses, I declare this year your business will go to the highest. As, as of now, the Spirit of the Lord says, never will you have a cap over your life. No limit over your life. There's a, there's a fire God has released in this house. Fire burning honor like never before. And give her a new language. A new language. A new language that only God can hear. New language. New language. Be baptized in that fire. The fire of the spirit. Tabrisha, this is your time now. Kayada deke. Sadaka base. That's it. 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 That's a spiritual awakening. That's a spiritual awakening. That's a spiritual awakening. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Fire! Father, baptize her. Baptize her now. Baptize her now. I whole body come under the anointing. I whole body. And let everything in our life come in alignment. Fire! Lift your hands, Father. I bless your children. They are now born of the Spirit of God. They have been baptized in a fire. Pharaoh, come quickly. And, and you too. You too, brother. Come, 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 come. The devil has messed with you long enough. God says, I have to put an end to this. Hold hands. Hold hands. But put the other hand on your, on, on your bellies. The other hand on your bellies. My father, they have been violated by the enemy long enough. What they have is a gift from you. And the devil came after what you gave them. I declare their enemy is your enemy. Now arise on their behalf. Ignite a fire in them now. That fire that once burned. But today you're not giving them the same measure. Increase the measure. Increase the measure. Take them in a higher dimension. Baptize Pharaoh with a higher fire. And let the fire spread all over her bones. Let Nick be baptized in that fresh fire. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it, Pharaoh, release the spirit and walk in. Go in, that's it, that's it. Nick, re receive it, receive him. Yes. God says you have waited patiently for the door to be opened and three weeks ago the door opened. The Lord says this door you will go in and uninterrupted for 30 years. Uninterrupted. No devils will interrupt you. This fire God ignites today. It will burn to the next generation. They will burn for the things of God. And God says, as you are here today, your name is being announced somewhere. They will come looking for you. They will come looking for you, says the Spirit of the Lord. Now, Father, they have believed the gospel. You have revealed the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, pour a glory on them like never before. In Jesus' name, can we bless the Lord? Put our hands together. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Listen, after such a powerful service, don't leave here until you have an open mind for a new life. Believe God for something extraordinary to happen in your life. That your doors are not opening in 2024, they open now. Somebody shout amen. amen. You are not climbing to that new level next year. You have climbed now. You came here disadvantaged. But God says now you are going to be advantaged.
So don't go with the same mindset that you are a victim. No. God says now you have become a terror to the devils. Some of you people are going to hate you on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Don't worry. It's because you have become a terror. Haters are going to be mad at you even more. But God says don't let that break your heart. Because what God has put on you today cannot be stopped. So, uh, Uncle Sam, come and tell us where the food is. Oh, and then your, your visitors. Visitors. So, you talk about the visitors, and then we do the food. Now, remember that one. Praise God. Praise God. We just wanted to say thank you to the visitors who came today. Uh, if you can meet me right around the bend right there. It's called the Green Room. So I can give you a little gift. Amen. And just bless you before you go. Amen. And then, of course, we have a meal. It's in the lion's room as you go out on the right side. Okay, so make sure you grab something because there's a lot of food and it's all good. Amen. Yes. Yes. All the visitors come forward right now. If this is your first time, come up here right now. Now that I'm done ministering, I'm more nicer than... Their AI, Intercom's AI, the leader in AI for customer service. Whatever you do, do it for less. I told you, revival has started in the city of Dallas, where God is breaking witchcraft. The Lord is setting his people free. Look at everything. She has surrendered everything from the kingdom of darkness. Look at all of these things. And I tell you this after today, she no longer is in a bondage with the devil.